I'm J Rod D. And I'm G. Checking out the Poor Life Podcast Question and Answer Edition with Lucky. 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 Yeah, yeah. So we have some questions, and Lucky has some questions. And you yes. want to start us off with those questions that you want to ask? Yes, I have two questions. Okay. Y'all ready? Yes, yes. So yes. one is from a little girl. Her name's Dayon. Hey, Dayon. Dayon. So Dayon would like to know what do you all. guys do when you have writer's block? Like, if you have something you really want to write about, but you don't have the words just yet, what do you do? I stop. Mm. Mm. I stop because That's my cool. whole thing is I don't force the fit. Yes. I do not force the fit. I live by that statement simply because it's not as organic as you want that specific piece, especially if you're thinking about it a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Just step away from it. I like that word. It will always be right there. If it's meant to be said, if it's meant to be written, it will always be right there. That's real. Mm-hmm. That's real. What I do, if I don't have the words, I just like hum like the cadence. You know, like, nah, 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 or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that way I know when the words come, I can just put the words right in. And, you know, mm-hmm. know, I already working on how I want to say it. Words. How about you? I usually just give poems their space. Like, I treat my mm-hmm. poems like people, and I'm like, clearly you're done right now. So I'm just <laughs> gonna leave you alone, mm-hmm. gonna walk away till you're ready. And then, like I said earlier, I'll usually like go back yeah. and see those poems, and I'll try. And then, like you said, if it's if it's not ready, then it's just not ready. When it is ready, it'll come to me. That's what I got you. Second question. Second question. From Second Carla Eohanes. Hey, Carla. Oh, girl. Horrible. So she wants to know, okay. right? Before you started doing poetry, did you always think you could get paid to do this? Like, did you see this as a career before you started? When I started writing, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. I always knew, like, I want to make money off of this. Like, it, it wasn't like a, you know, I just want to go out and, you know, just express myself. Like, nah, bro, I want, I want to get paid off of this. So. You if I'm behind the scenes writing songs or if I'm doing poetry and getting paid to go around and speak, I I wanted to make some money off of this. Hmm. I um provide my family all that good word. Yes, <clears throat> <Contrary. clears throat> <laughs> I did not I did not see myself in this realm mm-hmm. for poetry. I I was a music guy. Yeah. I was like oh, okay. I like yeah. the vocals and the songwriting stuff like that. So I was like, I could do that. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to be on camera. I didn't like how my voice Mm sounded. But I like what my words meant. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I could shift these songs and these words and these harmonies and stuff to these people. But poetry, nah. Mm -hmm. I never in a million years would have thought that I would be right here in a poor life podcast. (laughs) But uh, that's why I yeah, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Like, I feel like I've known I wanted to educate for a very, very long time. But as far as poetry goes, it just started as something I wanted to express yeah. myself. Like, it just started as something like, well, your stuff is really good, so maybe you should read it out loud. And I was like, well, that would be a good way for me to kind of, like, overcome a fear I think I have or mm. just to talk about stuff. And, like, seeing it now and, like, seeing how far it is going, it's just like... Yes, yeah, you can make, now. yeah, like, mm-hmm. you can do it. You <laughs> can do it. <laughs> you can do this. You know what I'm saying? You put your mind to it. You work real hard. Buckle down. You got this. All right. So if, if your poems were how you dr- get dressed, okay. right? Mm-hmm. What do you put on first? Socks. Mm-hmm. What, you, what are the socks of your poem? Is it the title? The socks of my poem is the first line. It's that, that attention grabber. That society be like, she can't possibly be magic. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's it's that. The socks of my poem mm-hmm. is the You can't best. just start that poem. <laughs> it's like the very first thing I say. Like, a lot of my poems start with questions. Like, who shines for the sun? Mm-hmm. Or it starts with, like, something that's going to grab you in. And then I fill you in on what that means. Yeah, cool. What about you, Jay? Mm-hmm. Oh, like clothes. Dress. And dress. Getting dressed. How you dress your poem? What's the first thing you mm-hmm. put on? Pants. Pants to your poem, brother. Main idea. Mm. I think about what exactly I'm gonna talk about, and then I may have like a little, little thing in the, the part in the poem that definitely highlights that, mm. and everything else kind of like flows over that main idea. Mm. Mm. And now your turn. Undergarment. Yeah. Mm. Put the yeah. drawers on first. Put the drawers on first, brother. That <laughs> simply because that's the concept that puts everything gotcha, together. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I need you to understand this navigation, this, yeah. this story, this painting that I'm painting for you, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, woo. That was beautiful, man. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't be starting on poems like yeah, that. You talking about the first line? Shit. People, yeah. These people don't deserve yeah. just as one. Well. I got no. Okay, no. lucky first line's gonna be hidden. Yeah, like <laughs> you need to be at the edge of your seat. It's the, just right at the stage. That very first thing I say is just like, oh, oh, so that's what you're talking mm -hmm. about. All right, then I got you. We right here with mm -hmm. each other. And then it's like from there, I'm just building on that idea consistently throughout the poem until I can't build on it anymore, and then yeah, yeah, it's you. over. Mm, I, I got a question. Uh, so, what networking perk has poetry afforded you? Hmm. What? What you mean? Like, just you know, from being a poet. Being what if poets, I? Okay. What? Are, what? Are, what has that those network connections done for you? Like, what perk or what thing? What? What sites? You know, what really sites you from having that network? I got to perform for the mayor. Okay. Word. I got to perform for Mario Bowser. Uh, because and that that happened out of nowhere. Uh, I had performed to be one of those like metro performers because metro pays you to perform in front of their station. For real? Yes. Now you know. So I auditioned. <laughs> See this man. So I auditioned. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I auditioned to be one of those one of a uh, street performer basically, and I had got selected. And then there were people on the panel that, you know, selected you. And what happens is you perform at certain stations, you get to perform at the Kennedy Center, and you get compensated. So, um... I like that. It was literally amazing. But through station. through that opportunity, um, some of those uh, people on the panel picked six of us to perform for the Mayoral Arts Awards. They have it every year. Okay. And we had got six of us that got selected that year. And crazy enough, it was me... Rebecca Dupas, mm. Epiphany. Shout out to Epiphany. Alicia. Shout out to Rebecca. Shout out. And like, Rebecca. Uh, ELPJ. Shout out to him and Harvey and Sarks. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So it was crazy. Yeah. And what they did was they took our six poems from our audition and put them together. Like all six of our poems put them together. So we were like saying little parts of our poems. It was lit. So that, that okay. may have been the biggest thing like, that I think I've gotten. So I've got to perform for the mirror, and I've got to travel and do my art. And that's, yeah. that's, a, lot yeah, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. What you, man? I would say it, it allowed us to really, it allowed me to get to know the diversity of poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, from, there's a different animals. There's different animals in poetry. You got the animals that we see at Pure. Mm -hmm. You have the animals that we see at Busboy, and then you have the animals that we see at like just your random slams mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And even like my girlfriend who's just like, she just starting out, but you never know. Mm -hmm. Right. Like she's a beast. She gonna slam to you. She's she's like slam champion, right? mm -hmm. But uh, dog, she's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, it, like that networking skill because you see different poems and poets and you hear them. And we are studious in this, you know, art frame. So right. just being able to link, like I, I spoke with uh, the, uh, what's my name? What's my man's name? Joshua Ben Travis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool brother. Yeah, cool brother. Just off of somebody that came to one of our shows. Like, oh, I went to school with him. Okay. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody that I idolize in this world of poetry. Oh, yeah. And you just, you just know them. Picking up the phone, like, yeah. hey, yeah. <laughs> That's your That's name. Crazy. <laughs> You, I ain't gonna lie, man, and I ain't, I ain't trying to be like the two my own home. Nah, not to my own home. Toot your home, brother. But like <laughs> toot to the house's horn. But man, Christoph Jenkins, right? You know what I'm saying? I remember like a couple years ago, the fire cancer of poetry. My grandmother had passed away from uh, she had cancer, cancer a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, a couple years ago actually. And I did a poem, fire cancer of poetry. I met Kariga Bailey for the first time, mm. and from that point, you know, kept in contact. Poor Life Podcast. Always gonna have a podcast. We have a thing to speak. Yes, so yes, yeah. you did bring that up. And now we got it. You know what I mean? So we just trying to keep on going. I think it's that. I think this is this is what it's about. You know. Also, also because through now we're bringing up Christoph and Poet Life and all that stuff. Poet Life Academy. Because Poet Life Academy was a blessing. Like it really like it came at a time where like I was literally like okay I can't do daycares anymore. I know this. I'm not teaching teaching. Like I want to be able to educate mm -hmm. for real. And I know I can't do it here. Because unless it's mine, unless right. it's my daycare, I know I'm not gonna be able to teach the way I want to. And I literally quit my job, and the next day, Christoph called me and was like, "So I've got this opportunity for you to teach poetry in elementary schools. If you really want to do that, you know what I'm saying?" I said, "Yo, I just 
quit my job. I got yeah. all the time yeah. in the world. Producer, the man behind the camera. I got all the time in the world. We're going to call this Christoph's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I got a story about Christoph's Corner. But wait, do I talk like that, though? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, I got a, I got I this really job. I really got this opportunity like, for, for you, you because... Like, and you, I know you, you were really like... about it, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. And one thing that stuck out to me about Dolph is just the fact that he seeks those who are genuinely... That really want to like, do it. In the craft of that's poetry, be interview with poet like live, you know. Yes. And that's the that's the beautiful thing about it. And one thing that he always says is that if you're serious about it, you know. Let just, me know because I got you. Let me know, but also, like, it will create more avenues that way. Yes. yes, it opens up doors. I always saw that one, that one, that one open mic showcase would have led to all this right you know right. yeah you know, it's crazy it, it, it's crazy now we got like man god is moving yeah. man god is yeah moving. it's crazy and then it's just like the schools that i'm teaching at now like mm -hmm. being able to teach in dc is a big deal to me because mm -hmm. i'm from northeast dc and we didn't have programs like this mm -hmm. in schools so it's like being able to be the lead teacher of a program like this in schools and neighborhoods that i grew mm -hmm. up in it's just like wow thank you Chris. i really appreciate that it's a huge deal yeah, to me definitely. to be able to give back to my community in that way. Definitely. This segment has been brought to you by Christoph's Corner. <laughs> right. Corner. Once again, I'm J. Rod D. And I'm G. I am Lucky, and this has been the Poet Life Podcast community. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Think that they can... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wobble with the best like, stuff. You tired of having people in your videos? Come uh, on, you know what I'm You tired of having people in your crowd? <laughs> Quiet. Like, on their phones. Snapping on their phones. Come over to Poet Life. Come over to Poet Life. <laughs> you get your snaps. You get your snaps you know what I'm saying? Like, you get, you get your kudos. Uh, <laughs> you get booked. <laughs> from here to Sweden.